Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Saturday Reef Automation live stream. Looks like we got a uh, number of our usuals in here. What's going on, everybody? Today we're uh, going to discuss RODI systems. That's going to be the topic today. We're going to discuss uh, some different automating method methods, and we're going to discuss some things that I do with my RODI system. Um, let's see. So the giveaway today is going to be an RODI system, actually. Uh, so if anyone doesn't have one out there or needs a new one, uh, I'm going to be giving away a really good one, which we'll discuss as well. So this week's been very interesting for me. If you've been following me on the automation channel, I have been sweating my butt off outside in 120 degree weather building a tortoise habitat for my new tortoise. And it's been fun and also very uh, time consuming along with um, pretty much sweating my ass off. So it's been uh, pretty pretty rough for me. Uh, hopefully I don't have to sit outside anymore. Um, so today uh, the giveaway is gonna be 50 people. So we're gonna need 50 people in here um, to give away the RODI system. So uh, I will show you which one we're going to be giving away, just so you guys can uh, have a general idea of which one I'm giving away. So we're going to be giving away a four-stage here, uh, Spectra Pure, and it comes with a TDS meter, a dual TDS meter, and it comes with a pressure gauge and an auto shutoff. And you could take a look at it here online if you'd like. It's the RODI starter kit. And again, we're going to go over kind of different things inside RODI systems and what to look for. And of course, we'll ask any questions that you guys have about anything automation, of course. Um, so if you have any questions about anything other than the RODI, of course, you can ask away. So we'll go over that. Um, so these are the, again, this is the specs of the unit uh, that I'll be giving away today. And again, we need 50 people in order to give it away. So... Anyway, let's uh, get back to what we're discussing today. So Howard had a question, which filter is most important? And we're going to go over that specifically for those that aren't familiar with RODI systems. So the reason we specifically use RODI systems is to eliminate chlorine and basically, I'm trying to remember what the word is, chloramines, chloramines. I think it's chloramines in the water that most of us get from the city. Um, if you've done an ICP test with any of these um, waters from the well or from the city, you will notice that it has a significantly high amount of phosphates, nitrates, sometimes it has ammonia in it, sometimes it has, um, I've seen all kinds of stuff, sometimes it has iron in it, lead in it. A number of things that are very important not to have in your reef tank. So for those that are uh, using tap water, just keep this in mind. You might be using dechlorinate, dechlorinator or prime or something of that nature. Now, the water, again, will be safe for the fish. It usually just removes ammonia. But of course, it continues to keep all of the bad stuff in there, such as the phosphates, the nitrates, uh, silicates, all these things that feed algae, that feed all kinds of bad things into the tank from tap water. So you always want to use an RODI system because not only are you getting rid of the ammonia, of course, but you're getting rid of pretty much everything else. Now, I did a video on my Spectra Pure that I have, and I sent it into ICP, and I was astonished to see that my ICP test showed zero for every single thing coming from my water. And when I say zero, it was undetectable. Every single thing was undetectable. And I was amazed by the level of um, cleanliness, I guess, of the water that came in. It was pretty astonishing. So we're going to go back over to the Spectra Pure here in a second. There we go. And what I want to show you guys is, again, this is a basic system, but of course they sell a number of different systems. 
So you can go as crazy as you know some of these one by one seven stages, which we'll go over all the differences between all these, and we'll go over kind of what's the most important parts of the RODI system, and we're going to also go over some of the external and some of the internal parts, I guess you can say, that are important for everyone out there that has a need for an RODI system and what kind of you want to look for when you're buying it and what I went through when I was buying it. So I highly recommend Spectra Pure because every time I've used a Spectra Pure fil filter, I have received zero silicates out of the output. There's not anything else that I've used that I can say has provided zero silicates. Now, I've used the BRS resin. I have used the Marine Depot resin that they sell. I have used some resins that you can buy on Amazon. And I've done tests on some of them, and generally, there's always silicates on the out. And that's pretty, you know, pretty terrible, um, considering that it's supposed to remove silicates. That's one of the most important things that our DI system removes. So let's kind of go over that in in specifics. So uh, I'm taking a look at the chat here. Brian Bench says that he has tried it. <laughs> well, it worked that time. Um, yeah, I, I have no control over the giveaway, guys. So if the system's not getting you entered, you know, when we get to the end, you can let me know. Um, so generally, most of the systems that you're going to find out in the world is going to be 75 gallon per day, 100 gallon per day, 150 gallon per day, 200 gallon per day. Uh, generally, you're not going to see anything higher than that in the hobby grade systems. And generally, they're going to have the 10 inch canisters. Now, they make much larger systems. Spectra Pure also makes much larger systems. And you have to get these very large, expensive canisters. Uh, canisters. So we're going to maybe talk about that a little bit, but we're really just going to go over the hobby grade kits and the 10 inch units. Now, in every in every system, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your water line that's coming in and you need to figure out the pressure that's coming in from the water line in your house. Now, you could do that with just a basic pressure gauge that you could buy at a Heck, you could probably buy that at Ace Hardware, plug it into your pressure or where you want to tap into, and just see what your pressure is in your house. Uh, most RODI systems will work just fine at about 40 PSI to roughly 50, 60 PSI. Um, now, when you get up to the 150 and 200 gallon per day, and some, and Ravi says he has a thousand gallon per day, you're going to need to boost the pressure, and that's what you use a booster pump for. So you generally don't need a booster pump if you have a pressure of roughly 40, 50 PSI. You're going to need roughly 70, 80, 90 PSI if you want to get your one-to-one -one ratio or your one-to-three ratio on some of these. And when I say one-to-one -one or one-to-three, I mean you're going to get one-to-one -one wastewater to feet or wastewater to water that is used in the tank or in your reservoir. So what I mean by that is when you have an RODI system, it actually removes bad water and gives you good water. And a one-to-one -one is usually going to be your best bet because that way you can not waste a lot of water. Now, they make one-to-threes, they make one-to-fives. It all depends on the membrane, which we're going to go over. So depending on the membrane you get, and depending on the pressure that you're sending through it, that's going to determine your wastewater ratio, and it's also going to determine how much PSI you need. So the first thing you always want to do is find out what your PSI is, because if you have a PSI of 20, you're going to need a booster pump to get it to 40 or 50. Now, on the flip side, if you have a pressure of, let's say, 90 or 100 or something that's coming out of the tap, and you don't have a membrane that can support that high of a pressure, you're going to need to get a pressure reducer or regulator. So uh, SpectraPure makes all of these parts. And what it will typically do is it'll take that 90 or that 80 and it will drop it down to, you know, 40 or 50 to where you need it. Okay. So the first thing you do is get your, your pressure, figure out your pressure, figure out what you want to send into the unit. And that's kind of how we go. 
with that. So how I hook up my system is I don't put the pressure pump or the booster pump, sorry, going on to the incoming. I have the booster pump going into the membrane, which we're going to go over. So let me switch over to the system so we can kind of go over how it works and how you set it up. All right. So your first stage, which is right here, is going to be your sediment filter. Now, your sediment filter, you can buy a couple different ones. SpectrePure makes, I think, three different ones. You can make a, a disposable one that after it turns this terrible, ugly black and brown color, you can just toss it in the trash. They also make sediment filters that are rewashable or reusable. That's the one I use where you just remove it and you throw it in the, you know, you throw it in the uh, washing machine for 30 minutes. It cleans it nice, nice and clean and then you throw it back in. So the sediment filter is what takes out most of the larger things that are more important, like ammonia. It takes out most of your uh, hard metals, such as you know lead, for instance. It'll take out the sediment filter is very important. Now again, what how I hook mine up is I run the incoming water right into the sediment filter. I don't put a booster pump in between. I don't put anything in there. I just run it right to the sediment filter. Typically the sediment filter can take a wide range of PSI. Now here's the here's the key about it though. If you're running a 90 PSI for instance, which is very high, there's a potential that the seals will break on these canisters. So you have to be really careful that when you're using anything that's a high PSI incoming that you either dye it down or dumb it down to 40 or 50 before it goes into the unit and then take a booster pump on the output and then bring it back up. And the reason that you want to do that is because the membrane can handle very high PSIs, but the canisters cannot. So you want to always make sure that you're not running a high PSI into the canisters. And I can tell you that I have had multiple leaks, cracks from RODI systems over the years and I get this huge flood. So be forewarned that anytime you run any type of RODI system that you run roughly, I'm going to say 60 PSI or less into the first filter or into the first uh, canister, which is your sediment filter. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh no, Desert Reef Aquatics is here. I thought he wasn't going to make it today. I was so happy when I didn't see his name on the list here. I was like, thank God he's not here. And, of course, he showed up. Oh. I don't even know if I can go on, guys. We should just stop the stream because Desert Reef Aquatics is here. What do you What do you think? Just Maybe we can kick him out. Is there a way to kick him out? Hey, guys, mods, do you know how to kick him out? You should figure this out. Anyway, <laughs> all right, so it goes into the sediment filter, all right, and then it goes into your carbon or micron filter, okay? Now, in my system, I have two micron filters. I have a one and a five, which I feel is going to be your best bet. Now, again, the one I'm giving away is a very basic system, so this is going to probably come with a five micron. Let's see what it comes with. Uh... I don't know if it tells you here. It comes with a 0.5 micron. Okay. So that's a really good uh, that's a really good filter for the second one. So basically the, the carbon filter is what's going to take out pretty much everything else that is what you would what you a normal carbon would take out, such as impurities in the water like um, Let's see. It'll take out most heavy metals. It'll take out. I'm trying to remember the list. I have a. I had a list this morning and I just totally forgot. <laughs> oh yeah, the chlorine and the chloramines. So that's the really important thing here. So your carbon filter is going to take out your chlorine, your chlorine and your chloramines, which are deadly to your fish and corals. Okay. Uh, it'll take out your phosphates, it'll take out your nitrates, 
uh, generally the carbon filter will take out all of the um, dissolved organics, whereas the sediment filter will take out kind of your larger stuff, like I said, ammonia um, and your 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 some of your metals. Uh, it's just going to clean up the water, and and basically the chemical filter, which is the second one, is going to polish the water essentially. Okay. Well, carbon didn't remove you, so it doesn't remove all impurities. Wow. That's a that's nice, man. You know, everyone in this channel doesn't want you to be here. Like we had here, let's see. We had four people say give them the boot. Look at this. Sibilia, give them the boot. And then Aaron's trying to get rid of you. Man, everyone wants to get rid of you. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop pissing in your water, huh? All right. All right. So, like I said, most systems will have a second a second filter, which is going to be your carbon filter. Now, in my system, I have two carbon filters, which you can run in like a seven-stage system. So it would go sediment, always one filter, then carbon, generally one or two filters, and then after the carbon filter, it goes directly to the membrane. Now, this is what we were discussing before. This is where you put the booster pump in, from your second chamber or your third chamber if you're running two carbon filters, into the membrane, that's where you put your booster pump, or that's where you put where you want the correct PSI to get into the system. Now keep that in mind, the, the PSI meter that comes on these is generally going to provide the pressure going into the membrane, not into the system, okay? So again, if you're running a high PSI system, which generally will be like 150 or 200 gallon per hour or per day system, you're going to need to boost that guy to about 80 PSI. In order to do that, you need a booster pump. And the booster pump is going to be between your carbon filter and your membrane, not before it goes in the sediment filter. Again, I see a lot of people do that. They put their booster pump going into the first chamber. And again, you're, you're setting yourself up for disaster. These do not support that kind of PSI, these, these canisters. Once it gets into the membrane, that PSI drops significantly from 90 or 80 down to like 5 PSI going into the next chamber, which is going to be your DI chamber. So second chamber, boost it, or what you need to do to get the correct PSI into the membrane. Okay, sorry. And... You have your wastewater and you have your clean water. The clean water is going to go into the DI, which we're going to go over in a second. And your wastewater is going to go, you know, outside. Um, Lee had a really good question here. What is the difference between Spectra Pure from BRS? And I'm going to go over that in, pretty much in detail when we get to the uh, when we get to the DI section here. And I'm going to go over kind of what I experienced with BRS. Um, now, the BRS units are very good, but there's a big difference between them. So we'll go over that. Uh, let's see. Brian asked, then how does the DI canister handle the high pressure if the filters don't? The high the DI ca canisters don't get high pressure coming from the membrane. That's what I'm trying to get at, is the membrane pretty much kills the higher pressure before it gets to the DI. You always have your membrane go before your DI in every single system. Um, what's going on, Jonathan? It's good to see you, my friend. Uh, John, we're going to go over auto flushes. We're going to go over that uh, more in detail. But I'm kind of going over just the basics of an RODI system uh, before we go into that. Um, okay, so... You get into your membrane. Inside the membrane, um, which this canister opens up right here, that's how you open it up, and then you put in the membrane. Now, the membranes will generally range from 75 gallons per day to about 100 gallons per day. And if you go higher, you need to actually get two membranes typically. So, And that's because they don't make membranes that are 200 gallons per day. So if you want to get something crazy like a seven-stage, you know, high capacity system like this guy, you will see that they have two membranes in these higher systems. And again, that's dependent upon how many gallons per day you go. So if you go with the 200 gallon, you can see that you need a booster pump and you need two uh, membranes. And again, that's because the membranes don't come in 
higher than 100 gallon per day. So what happens is you basically daisy chain these two membranes together and therefore you get to 200 gallon per day. So Mark, exactly. You put the booster pump after the carbon before the membrane. That is exactly correct. You want your booster pump to go into the membrane. Okay. Uh, let's see. Just got a WXM module. Nice. What's up, Waleef? I think Waleef, is that how you spell it? L Waleed, sorry. Waleed. No one's jealous of you, Desert Reef Aquatics. No one's ever jealous of you. I mean, everyone's seen your fish tank. Like, everyone knows you don't know what the hell you're doing. Wastewater staging from uh, Michael B. I'm not sure what that is. I've never heard of wastewater staging. I just throw it outside. Um, you might have to explain it to me because I've never heard that statement before. So anyway, that's kind of how the units work um, in a nutshell. Then they go to the DI, which is what we're going to go over in a lot more detail. So this is where the differentiation comes from a BRS system or from any other system in the market is your DI. These carbon filters and sediment filters, all the companies that make them, they're all the same. They all work great. But what I have noticed when using the SpectraPure filters, which we're going to go to and we go to the DIs, is they have a lot of different DIs. But one of the things that I really do like about SpectraPure, and a lot of you guys might disagree with me, is that you buy the filter, it's already packed for you, you just put it in the system. You don't make your own resin, you don't have to dump the resin into the canister, you don't have to make sure it's packed down, you don't have to do any of that stuff. They make them pre-made for you. And what I found is that every DI system that I've ever used, other than SpectraPure, I 100% guarantee if you guys take an ICP test and you run any other companies out there, you're going to get silicates. You're going to get silicates, okay? Um, and that's what DI is basically meant to do, is remove silicates. That's one of the most important parts of the DI uh the DI cartridge, silicates, phosphates, you know. Uh, yes, you can use spectra filters in any RODI system. So I would recommend that anybody that's using BRS resin right now or any other resin out there to give these a try and see what your results are. I can tell you right now I have actual evidence and I can show you um, that these filters that spectra Pure makes are going to be the best and clearest water that you'll ever get out of these, and the most, and you'll have zero silicates in there. Um, let's see, we had a question up here from Producer Reef had a question. Where is it? I didn't answer it. Does all silicates get removed, even though TS? That is, uh, that's going to be a no. That's another thing. Generally. Total dissolved solids or TDS uh, doesn't register silicates. It registers stuff like phosphates. It registers stuff like nitrates. Uh, dissolved solids are not going to register silicates generally. Um, that would be more of a specific question to uh, for SpectraPure to answer you. Um, the RODI removes chlorine. Yes, the carbon filter, which is the second filter, will definitely do it. Um, that's what it's meant for, okay? Uh, yes, producer reef, you definitely want to move your booster pump before the membrane. Now, I can tell you there's probably a lot of you out there that have put the booster pump before the whole entire system and have been just fine. But I can tell you from my experience, especially if you're trying to get a high PSI. So let's say you're trying to get like a 90 PSI to get a uh, higher gallon per day output. After a couple months, those those uh, chambers are going to crack. And I can tell you right now, and producer Reef, you could tell me, if you are running your booster pump before your entire system or anybody out there, tell me if you're getting any type of leaking from the unit whatsoever. And I mean just a small amount. Go look and see if you have any salt creep because that's the problem is you're, boost, you're putting too much pressure into the canisters. Um, okay. 
So the silicates um, will get removed by the silica buster that they make. So you can technically just get a silica buster cartridge and be done. Now they make a couple different ones. They make a mixed bed, which is a decent cartridge. Um, it won't get rid of every single bit of the silicates. So I recommend the silica buster if you're doing one um, if you're doing one DI cartridge. Now, if you're doing a, a two cartridge DI system, which generally nowadays a lot of people do, I would do a mix bed and a silica buster. And I'd always put the mix bed first and then the silica buster second. The mix bed is going to be the one that you're gonna replace the most. So in my system, I have a mix bed, a silica buster, and then I have their new one, which is called the Enduro. Now, you can see the Enduro is pretty expensive. It's $44. However, I have a three-stage DI system. So what happens is it goes into the mix bed, then it goes into the silica buster, then it goes into the Enduro. So it's a three-stage DI. And I can tell you that this Enduro cartridge I will probably never have to replace. It's there to kind of finalize the polish just to, you know, just in case there's anything left over. I have replaced my mix bed once in about three months. I have yet to replace my silica buster and I've yet to replace my enduro. Um, so again, if you want to not have to replace stuff often, if you want, and you know, if you guys know me, I don't want to replace stuff all the time. So I got a, a seven stage kit and I put three DI cartridges in and that's my setup. My setup is max cap, um, silica buster, then enduro. And the way that I'm able to do that is I'm sorry the way I'm able to have the best performance is I don't have to replace these just about ever which is wonderful you know Andy had a really good point here and I didn't mention that another thing if you put that boosted water into your sediment filter first which a lot of people do your sediment filter isn't going to last as long and that's another reason why you want to put the uh, booster pump right before the membrane okay uh, I rarely zero TDS, so maybe I need to get an ICP. Yeah, I would recommend getting an ICP for your RO at least once just to see kind of what it's how it's performing, you know, that I always recommend that. Uh, if you get the ATI ICP test, which I've recommended multiple times, it comes with an RO ICP. So you buy the uh, ICP test, it does your, your tank, and it does the RO for you. So it's all in one kit. So that's kind of nice. Um... John Grave asked, are they color changing resins? Well, they have a couple different ones that are color changing and some that are not. Like this is a non-color changer. Um, then they have a color indicating uh, silica buster here. So they have a couple different ones. It's really up to you how you want to go about it. Um, so I wonder what the pressure going to the membrane is if someone, again, most systems, and you have to look at your system, if it was pre-built for you, the pressure gauge is getting the pressure into the membrane. So it's not really the correct pressure going into the system, essentially. Um, I don't know if that helps, but uh, like I said, my recommendation when we first started is, again, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to want to know the pressure coming into your house uh, or coming out of your tap or wherever you're coming from. And I would go to Home Depot or Ace Hardware and just get a little small RODI pressure gauge with a cap and just cap it and just see what your pressure is. I think it's important. Uh, Aaron's I explain the $76 filter you talked me into. <laughs> so I don't know which one I, I don't remember which one I, um, which one I talked you into. Um, but the Enduro is $46, $45, and it's so high performance that you're rarely going to have to replace it. So, again, you're, Aaron, you're getting these better filters that aren't going to be needing to be replaced as often. That's the one thing to keep in mind. What I love about these filters is that they're pre-made for you, so you don't have to mix your own resins which drives me crazy, by the way. I hated mixing my own resins. I just buy one of these and it's already done for me. And I'm, I'm willing to pay the extra money because it's going to last a lot longer. Um, Kevin has a good question. How do they compare 
I can tell you with absolute certainty, Kevin, that you will get silicates out of that system. And I know that because I did an ICP test with the exact setup that you just said, which is the cation, anion, and then mixed bed system, which I had. I had the exact same system that you're talking about, Kevin, and I got silicates out of it, and I got sea lettuce in my fish tank because of it. So I can tell you right now that when you get a silic when you get a spectra pure filter you're going to get the cleanest water there is and again you can test it with icp tests so again up to you how you want to go about this um it is much cheaper of course go the brs way but uh i can assure you you're not going to get the silicates out of it and i can show you my icp tests uh aaron just had a really good point that he had diatoms and then switched to spectra pure which again they're expensive and pretty much got rid of them. So, you know. And another thing about what just Kevin just said is, and these new filters that you're going to get from Spectra Pure, if you get them, um, are going to last a lot longer than you would ever believe. I mean, they really are. Um, I do recommend also, depending on your system, that you do have a TDS meter. Now, the system that I'm giving away has a TDS meter of the incoming and the outgoing. But if you are going to do any type of DI uh, mixture, like you're going to do uh, a couple different canisters or a two-stage or a three-stage or a one-stage, you should definitely put a TDS meter out of each stage. And that's how you know when the DI is actually uh, needs to be replaced. The color changing is great, but how I do it is I have a three uh, prong TDS meter, which they sell here. Um, and I've actually asked Terrence at uh, Neptune about 17 times to make TDS meters for our Apex systems. But this is a dual and this is a triple right here. So if you have a if you have a two DI system, a two DI cartridge system, then you're going to want to put one of these guys. You're going to want to buy one of these specifically for your DI. You're going to want to put one right after your first DI cartridge and then one after your second DI cartridge. And that will let you know when the DI is exhausted, if you get TDS out of it. Now, I do want to mention, however, is if you are using the anion, cation, and mixed bed option that BRS sells, you are going to get TDS out of the cation because it produces some some form of uh, dissolved solids out of the cation, and the anion takes it out. So just be aware if you get the uh, DDS meter, you put a three stage at each canister, and then you know when they're when they're exhausted. So there's really no need for the color change. That's my opinion on all on all that. I just check it after I do a big water. Uh, I, I make a bunch of water. I go to my TDS meter. I just flip on each three, and then I know which one. Um, Uh, let's see. The problem is that it only let you know when you push. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I was saying, Brian, Neptune, I'd love for them to make a TDS meter and then get us alerts when the TDS is high. You know, um, if you're not getting any TDS, John, then that means you got really good water coming in. Um, you know, some of us here, like in Arizona, the TDS is just skyrockets, it's like 600 during the uh, summertime. Um, again, if you're doing uh, a lot of DI cartridges, you're going to want to know when they're out. And this is the way that you'll know when they're out. Um, now, the same thing could be said about a membrane. Now, people don't know this, but most membranes that I've ever used, and I've used a quite, a diff quite a lot of them, will provide zero TDS out of the membrane. So if you're getting any type of dissolved solids out of your membrane, then you know it's time to replace your membrane. So <clears throat> in my system, and again, my system is quite advanced, and I have a whole video, by the way. You guys can go take a look at it at my uh, RODI system. Um, I have a TDS meter on my incoming water. I have a TDS meter on my outgoing membrane water that goes into my DI. Then I have a TDS meter at each canister of the DI because that's the, really the most important part, you know. Um Typically, you replace your carbon filter eh, every two years. Generally, you don't have to replace those very often. Sediment, you'll know when it's time to replace it. The thing will look terrible. 
Membranes, the only way to know when to replace them is, like I said, if you're getting any type of TDS out of the membranes. Um, so that brings me to the flushing systems, which is what we were discussing, which I said I would discuss a little bit in detail. Um, this is where our, I would recommend going to BRS for. Um, unfortunately, if you want to get an auto flush system from SpectraPure, you have to get their gigantic system, which is the auto auto system over here, which is, is a ridiculous amount of money. Um, I want to say it's this one that has an auto flush with it. Yeah, this one has an auto flush with it. Automatic membrane flush. So if you want to get their mem they don't sell their flush kit separately for some silly reason. I don't know. I've asked them. They don't sell it. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> so if you want to get the auto flush that SpectraPure makes, uh, you're going to have to buy this $1,000 kit that comes with it, basically. Uh, the other recommendation, of course, is get the one that BRS sells, and you're set to go. So... Uh, BRS sells a different one depending on your gallon per, uh, per day system. So I will show you what that looks like just so you guys can see. Uh, come on, computer. Uh, auto flush. So I recommend this. This is what I use actually on my system because I'm not going to spend $1,000 on a new RODI system that I've had for years and years and years. But here's the uh, Aquatech auto flush system. And they make a couple different ones. So you'll see they have 300, 400, and you'll figure the out which one you need by which membrane you have. Okay. So you'll get a 500 for a 75 single or a 150 uh, dual. You'll get an 800 for 100 or 150 or 200. And that'll replace your manual flush kit. And I can tell you right now, I've had a lot of conversations with people about this. Get the auto flush kit. Um, what are they, $50? You don't have to worry about opening and closing solenoids. You don't have to worry about TDS creep. This will automatically flush your membrane, and it will make your membrane last a long time. I've been using this on a 200-gallon-per-day system, and I have yet to replace my membrane in, I don't know, two and a half years. So, um I think that's a you know a really good thing to invest in, which is an auto flush kit. Otherwise, for those that don't know, you have to actually manually flush the system with this little um, man. I'm I'm totally out of it today. Valve. You're gonna have to take the valve and flush it every time your system turns on. This is just so much easier. Um, so you know, so. Most of these systems, actually all of the systems that I've ever seen, have an auto shut off valve. Now, how an auto shut off valve works is when pressure builds up on the system, meaning when anything on the output of the system gets um, turned off, so either by a valve, a solenoid, um, anything that's going to provide pressure to the system, it'll shut off the water going through it, which is really great. Uh, you want to talk about having a UV on RO unit. We could talk about that, yeah. That's fine. Uh, Pure Pro Com. Never heard of Pure Pro. I don't know if that's a, not a United States company. Uh, I've never heard of that company. Is there any way to adjust the amount of flush time? I'm flush for only a short... Like, uh, wave Guide. There is no way to adjust that, um, at least with the auto flush system. If you're doing... You know, of course, your own flush. You could put those on solenoids and program them into an apex. How long will a flush valve like that keep a membrane alive? So <laughs> there you go. Brandon, um, your membranes have lasted three years. I can't believe that. But mine have lasted about two and a half years with the auto flush. So not sure, honestly. I've had them last forever. I've never had any TDS come out of my membranes. Um... Uh, Flush each before start. Yeah, that's pretty typical for auto flushes. That's 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 actually very typical. Uh, hundred hundred gallon two. I'm assuming you mean hundred fifty gallon per day membranes. 
Uh, you will get the 500. Is that what it said? Um, no, you will get, if you have two membranes, you're going to get the, yeah, the 500. I'm sorry. Yes, the 500. That's what it says there. Uh, the auto flush runs generally once it starts. So once it gets water, it'll start. And then I've noticed auto flush also goes after the system has stopped uh, producing water. Um, I think it does run a few times during, but I've never went in there and checked. So, all right. So I get this question a lot, and we're going to go over this. Do I run my RODI system directly to my sump? Now, a lot of people on the stream are probably going to say, yeah, yeah, it's just fine. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, don't ever do that. Uh, you're going to always want to produce water into some form of reservoir. Hell, it could be a five-gallon bucket from Home Depot. Do not, please, guys, do not run your RODI system into your sump on an auto top-off, okay? I will tell you there's a lot of problems with doing that. Now, let me explain a couple things that will cause problems. Let's say, let's just say for some reason your RODI system decides that it's going to not, uh, the auto turnoff is not going to work. Let's just say. That has happened to me once a long time ago. The auto shut off didn't ha didn't work, so I got this pressure buildup in 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 the canister, and boom, the pressure exploded one of the canisters. Okay, <laughs> so if that ever happens while you are using as an auto top off, uh, you're going to get a gigantic flood, and there's no way to shut it off. So absolutely, don't ever do that. The second reason is every time your RODI system turns on and off with an RODI with an auto top off you're going to get this gigantic amount of TDS creep because you're going to have this water that is just constantly inside. There's going to be a gap of water just going up and down, up and down, and you're going to get tons of TDS creep. So don't ever do that. Um, there's other things. Let's say your membrane fails, or let's say your um, one of your canister fails, or let's say any of your any failures in here are going to feed that bad water into your tank. OK, at least if it's in a little five gallon bucket, you can toss the five gallon bucket and replace the parts. OK, um, let's see what else. Do you think it's bad to use your autofill program in your RO reservoir? Uh, I don't quite understand that question, Stanley. I'm sorry. Um, yep, there you go. That's. Perfect example. <laughs> Does your reservoir from the RO unit run through an apex solenoid? We're going to go over that specifically, Jonathan. That's kind of more advanced stuff that I wanted to discuss in a little bit. Uh, which auto flush do you recommend? Producer Reef, it's on BRS. It's made by Aquatech. Just type in auto flush kit or auto flush restrictor, okay? Uh, Steven, I live in Arizona as well. Um, I have never in my life, and Desert Reef, I don't know if you're still here. He also is in Arizona, and he has an RODI system running outside. Um, I have never had a problem with heat. However, do not have sunlight going right onto your RODI system. Obviously, you'll get algae and all kinds of junk inside. Your sediment filter will be destroyed also. I've never had an issue with heat with a DI. Um now, it's possible that the heat could affect the DI's uh, longevity, but uh, I have not seen that personally. Um, I've, not, I've not had any issues here in Arizona with, with running DI's in garages, not one time. I used to run a DI underneath my tank, which had a fan that would come in from the outside in 120, and it would hit the RODI, and I never had an issue with it. So... Um, I would assume 
there's no issue with that. Um, let's see. Okay, so we went over kind of an auto uh, auto shut off. Okay, so if you do an auto shut off system, you're going to need something to close to shut that off. Now that can either be a float valve. So once the water gets to a certain point, it'll shut off your system. You could do that with a high low sensor with uh, an apex. You could do it with a solenoid. Um, you can have a solenoid just turn uh, kill the water coming into the reservoir, which will then activate the auto shutoff kit. Um, there's a number of different ways to do this. So my recommendation, however, which a lot of people don't do this, and I'm going to show you uh, some of the things that they sell here. Uh, is it a level controller? I think it's a level controller. So they have a, you know, again, as I'm showing you stuff here, um, just remember that everything Spectra Pure makes is, expens yeah, is expensive. It's well-built product. So everything I'm showing you is going to be pretty expensive. Um, but everything they make is just fantastic. Also, their customer service is great and their warranty is great. So anything I'm showing you, just you might balk by the pricing. But again, remember, you're getting very high quality product here. So this is the multi-tank liquid level controller against $213. But this would basically do everything for you uh, to make a reservoir system. It has a high and a low sensor, and it does it fills it and, and fills up your tank for you. They also have ATO systems you can get. Um, they have liquid level controllers. This is a solenoid dual pressure switch. So what this basically does is when it gets pressure, it kills something. It kills a solenoid, for instance. Um, they got a couple different things here, and you guys can go on here and take a look what they got. But what they don't have and what a lot of people don't do is they don't kill the incoming water in case of an emergency. And this is the most important thing that I'm going to tell you guys about RODI systems. Everyone, most of the time, and I'm sure there's a lot of you that do this, um, you just have water coming from a tap or water coming from a sink or wherever going right into your unit and then you have a shutoff valve and then you have all this stuff to protect you right now what if something was to leak the problem is you have this incoming water that always is incoming no matter what unless you go outside and kill your water to your house that water is always coming in so what i've done in my system is i have a, a i call it the emergency solenoid I have an emergency solenoid at my water, my incoming water. So it kills the water there in case there's a leak, in case there is anything going on, electrical interference um, with the system. You know, let's say, and this is why I wish the TDS thing would be developed by Apex, because then I can just kill the water coming in when my TDS goes too high. It'll just kill it completely. So I recommend everyone out there, that has an RODI system to purchase a solenoid for your incoming water, okay? Now, most people don't do that, which I, I just don't get it. So there's a company called Auto Top Off. Um, Auto Top Off, very easy to remember, dot com. Um, the guy here makes tons and tons of different things, but one of the things he makes is solenoid valves. And you can get any kind of solenoid valve that you want at any size. Okay, some of them are powered with different things. So generally, you would want a normally uh, closed solenoid. So you want one that is going to be closed all the time, no matter what, and then have your apex turn it on and then open it up. So he has normally closed right here, $45. These are really high-quality solenoids. Um, the guy that makes these... Super nice, easy to get, whatever you want. You can even custom make something. So what you do is you take this plug. You plug this into your Apex, into your EB-8 or whatever, right? You put this right at where your water's coming in, okay? And then you program it to always be on unless there's a leak or unless something happens to turn off. And what it will do is since it's a normally closed solenoid, it will close off the water if there's ever any problems. If you ever have electricity go out, you can have the fallback, turn it off. So that way, anytime your apex loses uh, power, anytime your apex um, 
loses connectivity to the EB-8, it'll kill the water no matter what. So I highly recommend that you guys buy one of these. Um, Auto Top Off makes them, like I said. Do not use the solenoid that Apex makes to do what I'm telling you because, again, it defeats the whole purpose of what I'm talking about. Um, so normally close my recommendation, uh, again, on the incoming water. Uh, Brian, I've had this particular, again, the guy that makes these, these are really, really well built. Uh, you can see they're $45 also. I have not yet had to ever replace them. So, um, just my experience, the ones that he sells, zero issues. Um, if you're kind of weary about it, buy a couple of them, you know, and hell, you can put... You could put a daisy chain of two of them or three of them, you know, and have them powered off of the, the same outlet, you know, with a with a power supply. Then you have three redundancies. Um, Apex will close it automatically. Well, again, Apex isn't going to close anything. It's not going to close anything coming into the RODI system. So if there's a leak, you need to have a solenoid to kill the incoming water into your RODI system, and that's what these would be recommended for. Um, regardless, you would definitely want a leak sensor underneath the RODI system, which would then alert the apex, which would then kill the power to the RODI system. But in turn, let's say your apex gets flooded. Let's say anything happens to your apex. Let's say, hell, let's say your RODI just starts getting water all over the place. This normally close requires power, so once it doesn't receive power or your power goes out, it's going to kill the water coming in. Uh, let's see. Yeah, a lot of people use some really good solenoids. Can you put your three-stage DI resin order in description? Uh, John, my I can, but uh, go ahead and just watch my video. I have a whole video on it uh, on my RODI system. I don't remember if I I don't remember if I put the new the new stuff. So um, all right, how many people so we had twenty three people enter today. Unfortunately I'm not gonna be giving away anything for the first time in one of my streams because uh, this has gotta be a fifty a fifty person to give away this RODI system. Um, unfortunately with the way things have been going, um, I can't keep spending all this money on high-priced stuff uh, if we don't have enough people in the stream. Uh, so let's see. Where was I? Aquarium starter kit. Okay. So this is the one I'd recommend for anybody that just wants a, a basic system. Again, you can go out and buy the BRS system. Hell, you could buy any RODI system out there. But I recommend... Uh, you know, I recommend anybody out there still go ahead and get the Spectra Pure filters because the Spectra Pure, Pure filters are going to be what's going to help keep that RODI system uh, running, you know. So, you know, get a cheap RODI system and get the Spectra Pure filters and, and, and put your money towards those filters, you know. What is he saying? I'll give away 50 to BRS if you'd like. What does that What does that mean? Okay, see you later. I hope I hope Gary's kidding around. Uh, sky is the limit. You want me to give away a fifty dollar gift uh, gift card? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Look at that. I guess we can give away a, a gift card. That's fine. By the way, if anybody's on the stream and you're only on here for my giveaways, then you could just get lost. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I mean, that's just... Uh, I know Gary was kidding. I'm just saying it's you know it, most of my most of you that are on here are, are always on here but uh, <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, if there's people, if there's people just coming in here just to get free stuff, then I don't want you to even be a subscriber because that's just that's just worthless. Um, anyway, uh, let me think if there's anything else I wanted to discuss. Uh, solenoid, like I said, on the incoming, very important. Um, let's see what else is important. I try to tell everyone to get a lot of TDS meters. I try to tell Apex to make a uh, make them. That would be great. <laughs> Thank you, Reefing Ravi. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate everybody that comes on my streams, man. It's such a it's it's important for me to to help people. I really like helping people. So Stability had a good question here. Minimum stage will work for a tank. So based on what we discussed today, uh, I want to go through it just one more time, real quick. And a four stage kit is just fine, okay? The issue that you run into, uh, Stabilia is, or Stabila, I don't know how to say it, I'm sorry, is longevity of the system. So the bigger the system you get, the less maintenance. The smaller system you get, the more maintenance. Now, when I mean more maintenance, I mean you're replacing filters more often. You're replacing um, DI more often. You're replacing membranes more often. The larger the system, the less maintenance. So the answer to your question is, What's the minimum stage? The minimum stage is I highly recommend a four stage. I think a three stage is a little bit too small. A four stage is going to give you everything you need. It's going to give you the DI, which I think is extremely important. The carbon filter, of course, is extremely important. Sediment filter, not great and not really needed, but you're going to need it to get out the big stuff. So, of course, you need a sediment filter. And, of course, the fourth stage is the membrane. So, I think... You know, I think a four stage is the minimum, but to answer your question in a, you know, for everyone out there, the bigger the amount of stuff you have, the less maintenance. Okay. Streams are too long to just be here for a giveaway. Well, Brandon, you have a good point. I actually changed the giveaway uh, stuff. I don't know if you guys saw, but it ends after 45 minutes now. So, if you aren't here, or if you come in late, then you don't get to be part of the giveaway no matter what. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out, there's a couple little options in here. I'm still trying to figure out how I can make it so you have to be on for a certain period of time to be entered. And it won't be long, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. As long as you've been here for 15 minutes, I think that's fair enough to give you something. Um So let's see, can work with a four stage. Yeah, Reefing Ravi has a good point here. Any system can work with a four stage. It's not the system, it's just the maintenance that goes into it. You know, like I love having three DI cartridges because I rarely have to touch them. Uh, I only have to touch the first stage maybe every once or one to three months. And on the on the flip side of that, just keep in mind that um, those Spectra Pure filters are really expensive. So if I can only have to replace them once every three, hell, six months on some of them. And I make a lot of water. You guys probably see my reservoirs. I'm making 55-gallon drums once a week. You know, I think that's great, you know. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to flip back to me. So, all right. So, uh, we've been here, we got about, we've been here about an hour so if Desert Reef is going to be giving me 50 bucks, then I will give away a $50 BRS gift card, uh, and I will match that, and I will give away a $100 gift card. Um, the Spectre Pure kit is about $250, so I don't want to spend $250 today if we didn't have enough people. Um, but you know, let's give away something. So if he's giving, if he if he's put, pitching in $50, then I'll give away $100. How about that? Uh, let's see. Uh, nah, nah, nah. Can you do a video on extending the length cable of the... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I'm assuming you are re requesting extending the length of the cable that goes in between the controller and the pump. Is that correct? Uh, Stabila, I don't... 
I don't know how I get you a promo code. I don't I don't work for Spectre Pure. I, I don't know how I'd do that. So I, I don't know how I'd even do that. Okay, so Steven. I have opened it up before. Um any type of any type of copper wire can be spliced essentially. So uh, what that means is you can open it, you can splice it, it'll work just fine. You're going to completely void your warranty, by the way, if you do that. Um, but I have opened it up. It's not that bad. There's like I think four or five wires in there, and you just have to extend them. Do I recommend it? No. Um, I wish they would make an extension cable, um, but I'm not going to recommend you cutting that wire. That's just going to be what I'm not going to recommend. But again, you can, of course, do it. It's not splicing wires. You can splice any wire. Okay. See if I, see if I can get Neptune to ship out more Tridents. Okay, Courtney, I will, I will let them know um, that Courtney is requesting more Tridents to be shipped out. <laughs> uh, yes, it would definitely void the warranty, which is why I'm, I'm not recommending it. Uh, let's see. Reefing Ravi saying there's 10. Uh, I'm assuming 10 wires? I don't believe there's 10 wires in there, but I could be wrong. Ravi, Ravi might know because he's cutting wires. I'm not cutting wires. Uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Way to go. Uh, PR Fish Girl had a question. Let's see. On the old EB-8s for a small stuff like RO Solenoid, isn't there a certain plug you can't use because uh, it won't keep it off? Uh, no. Not for RO Solenoids. They have, um, you know, the 10 amps and the 5 amps. And the 10, amp, 10, uh, the 10 amps are just a stronger relay. And the recommendation would be probably to hook up like a chiller or a heater to the 10 amp uh, circuits. But the other ones you could use for a solenoid. It wouldn't be an issue. Okay, he says he Venmoed me money. I didn't even know you had Venmo. Now you have... How do I have more money than... How much money did you send me? All right. Well, Desert Reef, we greatly appreciate you pitching in today. That's awesome, man. Really awesome. What's really funny is uh, I make fun of him all the time, but uh, he does these good things for us, so I don't know how much longer I can make fun of him. Yeah, I think I told everyone, Gary, that they were in stock. I try to keep up on that for everyone. Any experience using a toner outlet on the EBIT to drive the solenoid? Well, you know, of course, I don't know if you know this, but um, Neptune makes the solenoid that is 24 volts. So absolutely, you can use a 24 outlet to drive any solenoid as long as it's 24 volt. And even if it's not a 24 volt, you can get a step down. So you can get a 24 volt to 12 volt step down piece, which will convert it to um, 12 volts. So you can get a 12 volt solenoid, which will work. Uh, the 120 that I showed you earlier will not work. You'll need to plug that into a plug. Um, let's see. Everyone's saying, thank you, Desert Reef. Yes, thank you, Desert Reef. Now let's make fun of them. So Desert Reef Aquatics, uh, for those that don't know, is one of my friends, and he had to save me this week. So, um, or last week. No, you saved me last week. <laughs> um <laughs> I decided to put uh, some hose to my uh, tortoise thing. I wanted to irrigate the tortoise, so I had to cut uh, some copper in my wall uh, to get to the... Uh. Anyway, long story short, uh, I screwed up big time, and Desiree came and fixed it for me. <laughs> uh, can control four be implemented to a tank? See, every time someone says Control 4, it, it totally gets me um, uh, by surprise because, as some of you might know, I, I sell and install home automation systems, and Control 4 is a big company in home automation. But every time someone says Control 4, I think they're talking about the Coral View Control 4 piece. Um, I have yet to actually use it or see it. Um, 
But I can tell you right now that from my experience, and I'm curious what other people think, um, from my experience, everything Coral View has ever made has had problems. Like, I don't get it. You know, like, I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> you know, their flare or their fleece or their f- or their clear filter, that thing has so many problems. I just, I don't get it. I don't know why I have, you know, they're, uh, the, for anybody that wants ICP tests, they, they sell these ICP analysis. They're awful. They're completely, they're not even close to what the tank is. I sent one into ATI the same water sample and one into ACP or ATI or ICP analysis.com. And one showed I had calcium that was like 670. And then the other one showed exactly what the Trident showed. So for ever, if anyone out there is, wants to save some money and get the IT, uh, AC, uh, ICP analysis um, kits, don't even bother. Get the ATI ones. They're a little bit more, but you get to test your RO and you get to test your tank. And it comes with a shipping label. Uh, I'm looking at Coral View right now. You know, I have Reef Octopus product, and their Reef Octopus uh, product is great. Uh, Hydros Wave Engine. Yeah, that's a good product too. Now, I think what I'm trying to say is that most of the stuff that they make, which they don't make a lot of stuff. Um, here, Coral View. They make a couple lights. Let's see what they make here. Yeah, they make these lights. They make uh, the ice cap stuff. You know, like I said, I've I've never been happy with them. <laughs> Brandon, there you go. I don't I don't just say stuff. <laughs> I try to be as honest and forthcoming with you guys as much as I can. Speaking of which, I haven't decided yet, but there's a good chance that you were going to be getting a review on a specific calcium reactor on YouTube at some point. I just haven't decided when I'm going to have that uh, posted. So I wonder, uh, what's his name, Robbie? I don't think he's here. Robbie has my old calcium reactor. I think he said he likes it. I, I don't I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah. Well, we're getting about an hour and 15, so we're going to we're going to start closing up shop here. Uh, since we are given, we are doing a giveaway now. Uh, it's not going to be the uh, RODI system. It's going to be a hundred dollar gift card to BRS. Next week, we are probably going to have Antonio from BCA. If you guys have not uh, heard of them, they make the random flow generators, and they make a couple other things which are really cool. So, um. We're supposed to have Antonio next week. Uh, I don't know what we'll talk about because it's not really um, automation related, but, you know. And then I spoke to Terrence from Neptune, and he's going to be on soon too. So we'll have Terrence on here, and we can talk to Terrence about all the fun stuff. And uh, let's see. Uh, Ravi, that is definitely not my tank, sir. <laughs> I think this is the ocean, sir. Uh, I could be wrong. I think there's a blue background in the back, but I, I don't know where I got this. Uh, hi, disconnect my power and aqua bus for my dose. Replace with one link here with dose. Now shows disconnected in the modules list. Really? That is interesting. Um, I'm curious where your one link cable is plugged in. Uh, R5 spike. Do you have your one link cable plugged directly into your EB8? Let me ask you that first. Oh, there's a delay, of course. Oh, okay. So you're plugged in the one link module. Does your one link module have power plugged into it? It must have power plugged into it.
course, of course, Mister, I gotta work. He doesn't work. You should see this guy. Sits on his butt complaining all the time. So R5 spike, uh, check. Make sure that it has power. It should come. It should have come with a power block. It must have power. Aquabus and power. If it if it has Aquabus and power, then the one link should uh, should be fine. Uh, I am curious. Um, if I delete the dose, the one link module found finds it again. That's very strange. Um, I've never heard that before. That's a first for me. But of course, you could just save the programming and then you know just bring it back over. What's going on, Javon? I think that's how you say it, Javon. So yeah, we're gonna close up shop. Uh, let's pick a winner. How about we do that? Let's do that. Our winner today is Mr. Andy Fleshner. Flesh Flesner. Flesner. You have won a hundred dollar BRS gift card, sir. If you are still here, please let me know you are still here. Walid, uh, I have done a lot of talks about the Salinity Probe. Um, if you have some time, go ahead and look at some of my live streams. I have spoke about it quite a bit, actually. Um, is there any way to access the alarm log in Apex Local? I believe there is. That's a good question. I've never actually checked. Let me see. I thought there was. Uh, now, I do know that the Ape... The, I do know that the alarm log gets stored in Fusion. It doesn't get stored on the unit itself. So that could be the reason why you're asking that question. Um, yeah, it doesn't uh, doesn't give you an alarm log. So there you go. The alarm logs are saved in the cloud in Fusion. So that's why you're unable to see that. Okay. Uh, another question. I want to run two pump, two pumps for auto water change. I did an entire, uh, la last week's live stream was all about auto water changing and I did a whole video on water change. So take a look at that. Yeah, Spike, I would maybe recommend contacting Neptune. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, maybe delete it and then re-add it. Maybe it's not updated. Uh, if you want to hit me up on PM, maybe I can help you um, this weekend. Andy, you won. If you are not here, we are redoing the we're redoing the role. I think it is a very good idea to have a pH probe in a calc reactor, Ravi, because as your pH lowers, that's when you know when to refill the calc. So absolutely, uh, that's one mistake I made as I would forget to refill it when I used to use calc. So, absolutely. Uh, do you know if the controller for the core 15 can be used for the core 20? Um, I believe it can. Uh, I, I heard of a couple people trying it. Um, of course, I'm not going to recommend it because, you know, how are you going to be able to warranty if something happens? Um, I have had my, co I've had three cores. I, I've sold one to Desert Reef. He's probably not here anymore. Um, he's had his core 20 or 15 for quite a long time with zero issues. I've had my core 20 for what, two years, never had a single issue with it. All these people are saying they're having problems with it. I haven't had any problems with it, but again, if anyone knows me like Aaron does, I have lots of problems with lots of things, so trust me. If I have a problem with something, you'll know. Uh, set programming if pH. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think you should still have the calc reactor stirring and doing what's supposed to, regardless of what the pH is in in there. But what I would recommend is that you maybe just get an alert when the pH is too low. All right, we're re-spinning because Andy hasn't said anything. So 
New uh, new winner, guys. Oh my goodness, look who won. I, t I tell you guys, this is not this is not uh, rigged at all. Yeah, Andy, dude, we we had you. I said, "Are you here?" multiple times for about five minutes, and I didn't get anything from you. So now Andy is here, of course. <laughs> so, oh boy. Every time I want to do something, uh, something weird happens. <laughs> Lee, what did you win last week? I don't remember. I know it sounds crazy, but I, I do this every week, so... Uh, Javon, I would not recommend using a Apex PM for automatic water changes. I just think it's too much stress on it. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, oh yeah, he won a hundred dollar Marine Depot card. All right, guys. Uh, I love you guys so much. But that's why I have this really cool thing now that I can do with you guys. Cool stuff. I like cool stuff. go Courtney I don't have enough money to give enough I'm glad it's funny because I I wanted um, <laughs> I wanted uh, to give away the RODI system of course so um, you know so we're gonna vote on it so to vote, you put exclamation point vote, and then your vote. We're either going to split it 50-50, and we're going to get Andy is going to get $50, and Ravi's going to get $50, or Ravi's going to get the $100 because Andy wasn't here. So I'm going to let you guys choose. You can hit me up whenever you want, and I will try to help you as much as I can. See what Stanley said right there? That's how you guys vote. It looks like mostly everyone wants to split. So, of course, you all know I like to be fair, so uh, I want to make it right. So I want everyone to have an opinion to make it right. All right, we're going to split it. It looks like everyone wants to split, man. So we're going to split it. Uh, 50 bucks is going to go to Andy, and 50 bucks is going to go to Ravi. <laughs> Andy, sorry, buddy, man. I, I have to be fair. I, <laughs> If you check back on the stream, I asked, I don't know, it was probably five, at least five minutes we waited for you. <laughs> Give the RODI away too. Okay. Andy, man, I know you're always here, man. I'm just trying to be fair. I, I, you know, if you guys leave and you don't, you're not here. I can't just give it away to people. It's just, especially when you guys have to come get a hold of me. You know. All right. So we're going to finish up here. Uh, Andy and Ravi, please PM me on Facebook so we can get you your $50 gift cards. 
And uh, I appreciate everybody that watched the stream today. Hopefully you learned something. A lot of RODI stuff. And uh, look forward to next weekend. Like I said, we're going to probably have Antonio from BCA on. And uh, I think we're going to have Terrence on in about two weeks, and that should be fun. We can bug Terrence about the Trident. And everybody else knows if we get to 1,000 subs here and on YouTube, we're going to be giving away a Trident. I actually have it. It's still sitting in my storage. I want to give it away. So um, anyway, I hope you guys had a good time today with me and look forward to seeing you next week.